Go. Hi, hi everyone. My name is Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, hi, Han Min and uh, Rich. We have Rich. Hello, I'll introduce hi, you Rich. Guys. So, welcome today to Dimension Data's Hangout. Uh, we're pleased to be on Google Hangout. We love, we love Google. And uh, today we're, we're going to be talking about those Monday morning headaches. You know, when you come back in after the weekend and everything, the, the system's down, there's messages, there's things to do, the IT nightmare, the network management. So today you have me, Mark Holmes, uh, or you can call me Sherlock if you prefer, Sherlock Holmes, that's fine. Uh, I'm based in Europe, I work for Dimension Data, I'm the European Business Development Manager, and uh, we have also today with my, myself, uh, Rich Schofield, so Rich, do you want to say hi? Hello, how you doing people? And, and Rich is kind of my boss in a, in a dotted line. He's the global business development manager uh, for, our, for our managed service offerings in our network integration or networking business unit. And we also have a Han Min who's uh, out in Singapore, lovely Singapore. Uh, say hi, Han. Han Min. Hey, hello, guys. Hello from me, Shepak. Hi. And uh, so Han Min is uh, he's working in, uh, he has a dual role actually. He, he's a bit of a specialist in terms of. Uh, uh, managed service operations, but also works in pre-sales. So he knows, you know, both sides of the coin. So you know, if we sell something, position something, speak to customers about it, he also has to deliver that as well. So he's kind of caught. He's not allowed, he's not able to sell something we can't deliver, which is fantastic. So so, really so Mark, you might you might almost say that while we only observe the headaches, Hanmin actually has to have them occasionally. Oh yeah. Well. I, <laughs> well. If you sell it correctly, there's no problem at all for delivery. Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> if we do, if we do our due diligence, if we get everything right in the first place, involve people like yourself, then yeah, it's going to run smoothly. So as I say today, we're here to talk about the Monday morning headaches of, of network management. And the reason we're holding it on a Thursday is because on a Monday, you'd be too busy dealing with all the headaches, right? So we shouldn't run it on the Monday. <laughs> That's the point. You'd be too busy, right? So here we are today on a Thursday. Um, I think we tend to have a pretty good weather everywhere now, so we've got a bit of sunshine. But let's think about, I mean, you know, Rich um, and Hamin. So Monday mornings, typically, you know, uh, let me let's, let me start the ball rolling, right? So typically, um, maybe over the weekend, uh, there's been some kind of change happening in the in the network infrastructure, and let's say maybe something like a configuration, a simple configuration change has taken place. Typically, what you know, how what would we expect on Monday morning? Everything okay? Probably well, I think not. The, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, admin. Yeah, I think I think the most uh, common issues on the Monday morning, if you do a change on the Friday night or Saturday, uh, Saturday, Saturday or Sunday, so uh, the most common problem is that uh, you may not observe the whole entire network is growing, right? And uh, importantly, is also that. Once you reach office, then you realize that some part of the network is not working, or perhaps uh, some segment of uh, network is uh, is malfunctioning. So then you spend a lot of time in, in troubleshooting the the, the the cause of the changes uh, over the weekend. You know this this is a common problem we face uh, in, in the past, and some of the clients they face these issues that uh, require uh, special attention to it. Or they perhaps there's also certain issues that uh, the changes carry out on Friday evening itself that causing the hardware failure. And uh, subsequently, and you do not have a 24 by 7 uh, uh, uptime services, and at, at the end of the day, you can only wait until Monday morning itself is sending an engineer on the field. That, that is something which is un, un, uh, unacceptable for the business. So these are the common problems we face. Mark, I, you know, and I think most of, most of it for me comes down to um, a lot of organizations just uh, not having the kind of staff it needs to be able to enforce the processes and procedures that you really need to implement in order to make sure that anything you do over the weekend doesn't impact you, right? I mean, you got to get two scenarios. You got the one where it's an incident-related quick config change to fix something, and maybe the maybe the the um, the change in configuration doesn't um, follow uh, organizational best practice, but it works, and the engineer is late for a beer at the pub. So, so what you're saying is, it's these things, right? So. If you let these things yeah. loose on uh, on equipment, you know, yeah. and it's not done in a standardized way, a best practice way, then these things are going to cause troubles, right? So, yeah. As, yeah. as I had been said, on a Friday night, somebody's made a quick change. That change wasn't verified. Maybe it was done in a rush. 
Uh, the guy wants to get away um, for the evening. Maybe his, his, his shift is about to finish. He makes a change. It looks okay. You know, it, everything seems to be okay. But I guess Friday night, there's no users around. There's no one to test it. And then that may cause something to happen over the weekend. And even worse, come Monday morning, you know, the users come into the office uh, and things don't work. So I guess the phone starts ringing in the IT support desk. Um, and even... You know, today uh, the networks don't belong to the cl to clients, right? The, the, the networks belong to the clients' clients because the databases, the online ordering systems, the you know the access to information, it, it's open now. We're not they're not we don't work in a closed network situation. So the internal users and both the customers will be affected by something like that, right? The, the most yeah, insidious part of it usually is the most insidious part is when. Um, the problem's not a dead down, right, Hanman? I bet you've seen that millions of times. It, it's kind of a, yeah. it's kind of a, you know, a, a degradation, or it's um, some kind of problem that doesn't appear to appear to directly relate to that config change, but at the end of the day, it does. Yeah, ab absolutely. I think we see a lot of these cases in some of the environment itself. I think the most important thing is that the changes itself did not go through a proper. Um, Impact analysis, you never go through a proper chain control board assessment, and ultimately the change is just applied by an engineer without a peer review. So that's isn't a best practice to be carried out in the change. So let that leads to a, uh, that leads to a subsequent problems in terms of the uh, the performance or network or even the user is not able to access to the systems ultimately and impacted the impacted the business. And I, I bet you what Hanman, I bet you the guy who did the config change on a Friday night. I bet you he's not working on Monday morning. <laughs> right? Yeah, of course. When he's not working on Monday morning, he's, uh, you know, and, and the worst thing is uh, some of those clients' environment does not have a 24 by 7 uh, monitoring services. And at the end of the day, and they only detect this, uh, this issue on the Monday morning. So, so the, the clock stops on a Friday night and then starts again on Monday morning just, yeah. just when everybody wants to use the systems, right? So. Yeah. So let's let's try and think about how we would prevent that then. So uh, you heard, I heard you talk a lot there, Hammond, about best practice. So yeah. you know, I know we we all probably know the ITIL world, the uh, IT infrastructure library, best practice for service management. And I guess what you're talking about there is is um, uh, in, uh, change control. Is that would that be right? Yeah, I think the change management process is absolutely important in any of the. In, the, in any of the network operations environment, or oh, well, any change to be carried out, it has to go through a proper assessment in terms of the uh, the impact of the environment itself, the application, the even the performance of the capacity. All this will be have a better understanding prior to the change uh, before you carry out the change. So the impact analysis is extremely important, you know. And and once you have the impact analysis and uh, done by the all various parties, the change control board will then. Uh, approve the process of changing, and changing itself. Um, and there's a lot of um, steps in the change management process. Uh, well, configuration is one important part. Uh, well, you think that configuration by applying the patch into this environment without doing a backup, that is a that that is a definitely a wrong thing to do because if there's no rollback plan, there's no backup, right. you'll never be able to roll back at all, right? So that so that guy who made the config change quickly on the Friday night and then. Scooted down the uh, the wine bar, he didn't uh, back up the configuration beforehand. So yeah. Monday morning, there's there's no rollback to do because there wasn't. It was on the yeah. Um, yeah. He did it without the proper. He didn't you know do a proper backup plan, testing plan. Uh, he didn't look at speak to his peers about about whether this is a good thing to change or not. He did he did it to yeah. fix something quickly, um, mm -hmm. and we're in a mess. And maybe it was only maybe it was only one line. Of, you know, some only one or two lines that he changed. It's a quite a small change he made, but the impact was was quite large in this case. Yeah, I think the so other I, area, itself, the other area is we saw we see a lot in terms of the client's environment is that clients do the uh, upgrade of the configuration, upgrade the iOS itself. So when they apply the iOS into the environment itself without doing a proper uh, assessment or backup, this is also another issue that which is uh, thought that is a straightforward thing, but again. It lead up. To, it lead to a, a issue in terms of performance. It lead the issue of uh, you need to have the rollback uh, of the of the network configurations. So, so one thing you said there, Mark, just a minute ago, um, struck me too. Um, even sometimes the most benign, quick, you know, one line, two line changes, mm. um, you got to apply some amount of discipline to. 
because I, I would say it's those cases where you, you, you think less and less that it's a problem and you might skip process more often <laughs> because you think it's an easy one, right? Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, I think, Rich, uh, the other thing that I also agree with you and Mark yourself that, you know, sometimes uh, in a client environment, client does not have the necessary skill set to troubleshoot you because after you, you even, uh, if, if prior to the change itself, you want to do an impact analysis, you don't have a skill set to do that, Subsequently, you make a change and you hit the problem on the field. You don't have the skill set and necessary experienced technicians around to help you to make sure that you are able to fix the problem. So these are the common common issue we see, you know. And 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 if they if they do not uh, do not engage external party to help them, this most of the common problem they see. I mean, today, I mean, I stand in front of a client and I talk to the client. The client pain points. These are the top three client pain points they face. Okay, thanks guys, that's, that's uh, quite interesting. So we'll summarize that, that little point there. So uh, a weekend configuration change, uh, didn't seem to do anything at the time. Come Monday morning though, problems, wasn't found over the weekend because there was no monitoring during the weekend. Come Monday morning, the users are calling in, the customers are calling in, unable to place orders. You can imagine it's just hell, hell is broken out really in the, in the IT support area. People are running mm -hmm. around. And, and it's probably a great waste of their time as well because they're going to spend probably the first three or four hours of, of the working week just sorting out the issues from last week before before they start doing anything productive that's going to add value to the business, right? So it's just getting back up to that level, fighting the fires. And what we said is that what really what should happen is that you know these fingers shouldn't be allowed to change things unless a process has been followed. And, Absolutely. Yeah. And you need to involve them. People with skills, yeah, yeah, yeah. people with uh, process, and, and so if you do that, even if it's a minor change, so it may not be 20, 30 lines of code or 15 different boxes that you're you're affecting. Even if it's a minor change, you should still follow that process because that way that you know that Monday morning you're not going to get those headaches. And you know, just to summer, you know, to finish on that as well, Monday morning, you know, you you'll probably get where clients can't place an order. You know, the next Monday they're going to go somewhere else and place an order with, with a competitor, right? So mm -hmm. there you go. Okay, um, another thing um, that I wanted to ask you guys about and talk about, that bounce around a little bit, was where there has been an, an actual incident. So maybe it wasn't caused by finger trouble, but maybe there's a, a an outage of a, a circuit or a device, or a, maybe a, a problem that's been going on for some time that keeps coming back. So you know, hand in again. You know, go to you first. So on that side, you know. You know, where you've had a, a real incident, okay? So, so oh. Monday morning, and you're dealing with an incident. I think, I think only when you are monitoring, then you're able to manage the network, right? Importantly, if you have some each some problems are brewing into the network um, of client environment itself, we must be able to detect it. So, when you detect it, we can take the, pre uh, the preventive measurement to make sure that we resolve it before it becomes an incident. But a lot of times, uh, client's environment itself, that uh, the brewing issue was not being detected earlier. It only when the particular segment of the network is stalled or the particular application is not functioning. Just take a bank as an example, right? If the bank is not able to transact something, then you start realizing the particular network, the particular segment of network is down or the whole network is down. So if you don't do monitoring, that is the worst thing that you when you are reactive itself. All right. Once you are in the monitoring mode itself, you detected a problem, and the problem is raising, is rising. And what we can do is to take a proactive action itself to just look at that, look at the problems, and how do we resolve the issue. And if it's a if it's a common issue, they, that we can pull data out from our problem management database, and we'll be able to resolve it almost immediately without the problems uh, surface and, and stop the whole entire network functioning. You know, these are the common issue we see. So what you're saying there, I mean, is that um, when you have a, an event, so uh, let's go back to the ITIL service management uh, framework again. So an event is where, where something occurs, a threshold is breached, or there's a, a link down, there's a device unreachable, uh, so maybe you know, it's not working, it's rebooted. That will kick out an, a, a, you know, a message, it will send a message, a trap to, to a system, and that's what we call an event. But, yeah. of course, as we know, you probably get, I don't know, 5,000 events over the weekend. <laughs> Right. So, what do you do with all those events? You need something that kind of assimilates, does, does some kind of automated analysis on those events, and only then does it kind of get to the become an incident where people are involved in it and there's a bit of human level. So, 
Yeah. You know, how, how many ins how many events typically would you expect over a weekend from a medium sized network? Well, I think I think uh, importantly based on our our observation in some of the uh, in some part of the Asia Pacific itself, the most uh, the most uh, mature uh, country itself we we do see that there's about two to three events per device in one month basis if it's in a, in a stable environment. But when, once that you have an earthquake or you have a dis disaster itself, the events will start flooding in. All right, will start flooding in. Then you realize that there's something is wrong somewhere. Either it's an earthquake that causing the device went down, or okay. it, could be, it could be also due to some reasons that somebody is, the third parties, the telco are not following the, the best practices to make the changes and notify the the, the, uh, the, the, the the clients because the client maybe is doing monitoring or the clients are engaging the party to do a monitoring and they're not being kept in the loop for all the changes in the telco environment and all these events will start flooding it and then you will see that is this a general wind incident or it is a only a false alarm because of somebody make the changes it's a schedule change but then mm -hmm. notify so, you right? so rich I know that you did some analysis uh, last year I think on, on hardware failure um, because I think, if I'm right, and, and you, you know, step in, but uh, I think that you were t saying that today, something like 85% of issues, uh, incidents, can be resolved remotely. So it's only around 15% where there's an actual, physically somebody needs to go to site or change something. Is that right? Yeah, actually, we're finding the numbers actually north of that, by the way. And, and actually, before I continue to answer that question, Mark, I think you may have forgotten at the beginning to tell people where they can log questions. You're right, Rich, I did. So now we're, we're kind of into it. You're absolutely right. So if you go to um, hashtag DD Hangouts, or you can find uh, where you can place questions on the event page. And we will get to those questions at the end, but we'll run through first, and then we'll, we'll get to those questions. But yeah, we're Rich, that's a very good okay. point. <laughs> so, to, so to answer your um, answer your question, what, we'd actually, what we're actually finding is that, that it's, it's north of actually 90 percent of incidents and and actually as we are further and further automating um, we're finding that many of those most are, if not all of those 90 percent that we all also fix remotely can be fixed by automated means right. so that when they come in an automation in systems detects what it is takes it takes a um, takes a an, an action and then resolves it in a much quicker time frame than a user could. So uh, some years ago there used to be this thing called self-healing networks. Is that the kind of thing you're talking about? Yeah, no, I, I think that's a little different. I think uh, self-healing the network can, uh, software in the network itself would do it. Um, this is more um, automations built into the management systems themselves that right. execute yeah. scripting in order to uh, produce a fix. Okay. Yeah, just that just to add on to the part itself, I think uh, all, uh, the, there's a lot of these uh, new new automations, uh, uh, autonomic uh, functions that in the tools itself that which we can help the clients to learn about the network, network environment, number one, also knowing the trend of the events, the incident itself, in order to, to put in place a script to really detect the problems. If it's genuine problems, they will self try to resolve it before you reach the reach the, uh, the, the engineers to pick it up to resolve it remotely. So there could be a, some, uh, about 40%, 50% of the events could be similar type of events for those standard devices, standard environment. So and this can be part of your knowledge database itself, the system will be able to detect it and correlate it together and see which are the, which are the devices is causing the real, uh, real problem and, and resolve it or heal it before you reach an incident level. Uh, now, you know what, Han Min, you just said something that's an excellent point as well, right? The knowledge base. Because if nothing else, first, from a small incident, even if you can get away with making a quick change and not following proper procedure, not following proper procedure also means that you failed to capture the knowledge from that into your knowledge base. So it doesn't happen again. Yeah, absolutely. I think, Dritch, if you just imagine that if it's a... Uh, a worldwide network that you are managing. If you are making the change in only one part of the world, and this change is successfully applied in the environment, tested, working fine, in bad analysis done, apply it, working fine, and you want to deploy to the rest of the world, do you want to redo it again manually or 
you can let the system do it automatically. So you can just deploy it to the rest of the segment of network phase by phase without human intervention. So that, so that is something that we should yeah. So that, that they've got a, they call that groundhog day, right? So <laughs> the same problem comes. Guess what? The following Monday, the same problem comes. The same problem comes. All that time that's wasted because you haven't. If you've invested a bit of time, it's a bit like. Um, you know, there's an analogy here, but you know, when you've got your laundry, you've got your socks and your you know your undergarments. If if you don't kind of fold them away and put them into the wardrobe. You, when you're trying to find them, you know, how many times do you find in the house that people are looking for stuff that if they just invested a little bit of time to, yeah. to file it away? So what you're saying is knowledge. So because the hardware isn't failing so often now, it's all about knowledge. And if you can capture yeah. that knowledge and use that knowledge, then you're going to resolve things much more quickly and even stop yeah. them happening in the first place. Yep, absolutely true. Question. Absolutely true. Mm. So another, another thing that I was thinking about is... Um, all on that same basis of hardware versus operating system and software is that um, the hardware you can see, you can see a light on, you can see it's red or it's green or it's amber or it's flashing or, or smoke coming out of the back of it maybe um, mm. or there's water dripping onto it but the, the difference with the kind of operating system and, and, and then the configuration so look at the, the actual operating system for a second you know we know patching is a, is a nightmare Patching doesn't get done. Testing doesn't get done. But Rich, how do you how do you deal with the fact that um, that when uh, you know you, maybe you don't have time or you don't have the environment because you can't build a test environment to test everything? So how how, did, how would you solve that? Um, when when you're going to ap apply a a change or test a fix or what have you? Yeah. So you've decided you need to make a, an operating system upgrade. For example, or a big, a major configuration change into the, into the infrastructure, but you don't want to do it live and then see what you know and ha see what happens. You want to do some kind of testing first, some kind of um, testing in the lab. You know, is this thing going to work? When I put this version of software on here and this version on here and this config, do these things still communicate and talk? But you know, maybe you haven't got the facility to do that. I mean, no one's got a, a network that you know that's just used for testing, right? Is that? Yeah, no, that's, that's a really good point, right? Because when it comes to um, production application systems, clients frequently have uh, a, a backup system or a test or dev environment or what have you. That's, that's, that's much more economically feasible. But not only that, but you can't simulate. Even if you had a duplicate network, you, you, can't, you cannot simulate the workload, the impact, the, the bandwidth utilization, et cetera, on it. So... So I think the answer, I'd, I'd love to hear what Han Min has to say about this, but but um, but what I've always found is that, that now it, we're back to that whole impact analysis and planning phase where, that becomes very uh, a lot a lot of complexity to it because, number one, first of all, you got to do your research and understand how the issues and, and et cetera apply to your environment. You've got to see, is there, a, is there a low risk part of the client's environment that you could maybe test a little bit of it on? Right. Yeah, I think Rich. I think yeah, that is is absolutely right. You know, because that uh, the impact analysis rely on a lot of information from the the supplier, from the vendor, right? As for example, Cisco from Blue Code itself. You need to do. You need to be notified on the patch. Firstly, you gotta get the patch notifications. You do the impact analysis. The impact analysis you put into the test environment and test test environment and make sure the user is accept uh, is happy with the test itself before they move it to the change. All right. The whole entire process is in the release management itself, which you need to follow the, the best practice. You know, that, that's, that's something that which we, we uh, for, for any network operation guys, they have to go through the, this particular process to ensure the network is always available. Now, of course, yeah. when do people want to do their upgrade? On the weekend, right? <laughs> yeah. Right, from, yeah. let's say, 2 to 6 in the morning, maybe some kind of oddball time frame. Yeah. And the biggest, the biggest problem I see um, with doing that stuff on the weekend, a little bit different from the other scenarios we've talked about, is, um, is uh, staying focused on um, what the rollback plan is. Right? You've got to have yeah. a rollback plan. And then, and then you've got to have um, what we like to call early life support. Yeah. Unless you've got your early life support, paying attention with a defined understanding of when you might roll back if you're having trouble and those process pieces I find become a very big headache come Monday morning. 
Yeah, I think, I think uh, yeah, Rich and Mark itself, a lot of these clients at Bonham today, they're trying to, uh, they're trying to only look at the monitoring part or the uh, even the, uh, the support part itself, but without buying any support services uh, on the field itself uh, to support them by 7 by 24, uh, uh, even the weekend itself, even if you have a problem with the hardware, you know, after the changes itself, that, that can be detected and that can be resolved remotely <laughs> or mobilize our field operations to, to resolve the issue. So another thing that uh, you know I hear from clients is that they may they may have the environment. Okay, so let's take a client that does have an R and D environment. So they have the, the the physical side of it and the configuration side, but what they don't have is the resource because those guys they're not just doing you know there's, there's not dedicated guys to projects, dedicated guys to troubleshooting, dedicated guys for strategy and going out to the business and finding out what their business actually wants. So tends to be that guy you know those guys are in a pool of people. So you don't get that kind of consistency. So how, how, how would you go about resolving that problem about not having resource? Yeah, I think importantly itself that uh, you see most of the client environment that we visited or we take over from the clients, uh, uh, the operation itself, we can see that either the patches are not up to date or things are not following through a right process itself because the lack of the knowledge, lack of the technical skill set to, to, to support the environment. So, if you if you engage a third-party vendor like us to help you to manage it in a way and the best practices being applied, and we have a 24 by 7 teams that doing all this job remotely or on the field, you know the resources we are we have all these certified resources skill sets on, 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 in the center itself or on the field to solve the crime so, problem. So if I take an, another analogy, maybe of a car, you know these days who services their own car, right? <laughs> you know, lift, lift the bonnet, or as they say on the other side of the uh, the Atlantic, the, the hood. The hood. You, the hood, yeah. right? <laughs> you look inside, you look at it, and you go, nah, and you close it, and you pick up the phone, and you, you take it to a service agent. So what you've done there is that you need skills and tools and, and knowledge around that, uh, that particular vehicle, that infrastructure, but you don't have it yourself. So you outsource it. You, you, you commoditize that part, and you give it to someone who specializes in doing that, which means that you can get on with the rest of your day. So in the network space, the guys they shouldn't be changing. You know, they shouldn't be going in and making changes to operating systems and doing simple changes. They should be doing the more. You know, they know their business better than anyone else, right? So the IT guys should be out there, not waiting for the phone to ring or to an incident to come in. They should be out there going into the business, understanding where the business is trying to go next and adding value to the business rather than. Kind of spending all day changing the conflict. That's not really. So th valid. That's a really. That's a really great point, Mark. Because it's been our experience. It's hey, been our experience. An incident coming in now. There's an incident right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, it's been our experience, and and actually, uh, commonly available industry research will show this that it is extremely difficult to do both for an organization to do both or, um, operations well and manage the strategic architecture and nature of their IT environment. Ninety percent of all organizations sit on the bottom two levels of maturity. And so nobody has to feel like the Lone Ranger if you're not getting it right. If an organization not getting it right, you got a lot of company not doing it well as well. Talk to yeah. the experts. Yeah, I think, I think Mark and um, Rich itself, there's another point based on the analogy that you mentioned earlier. You, know, you must have the tools the right tool is to be in place because nowadays the cars under the hook itself, everything is computerized. Everything is go by software driven, right? So you must have the right tools, the right process, and the right skill set in order to manage manage the changes or manage the uh, the, 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 tr the trouble trouble of the network itself, you know, end to end. So two process people that which within a a, uh, a service that we offer is able to deliver uh, a best uh, uh, performance of the network. So if you go back to the car analogy then, then hand me, let, let me just get this straight in my head. Um, those guys who I take the car to, they have expensive tool sets, they have all the diagnostic stuff. Now I'm, I can't afford to buy that to service my car once or twice a year. Those guys are, are probably, you know, there's car after car after yeah. car. So yeah. they're, they're utilizing that tool set so they, you know, and maximizing that. So they're specializing and, and doing that, that stuff. Meanwhile, that means that I can just pay, almost pay as I go, to get that service completed. Meanwhile, I'm doing something of more value. Yeah, absolutely right. I think, Mark, importantly, there's one point here is that 
these guys have accumulated the years of experience, the knowledge, the knowledge database they have built from a different crisis environment to a new crisis environment, multiple crisis environment, they have accumulated the knowledge in the knowledge database. And it can be applied from crime to crime based on crisis environment, applied accordingly. Yeah. I remember going into a, into a client's, uh, not, not so long ago, going into a client talking about network management, right, about the yeah. tool sets. And I said, you know, tell me what kind of tools you've got. And, you know, all the names started coming out, you know, list after list. Of, oh, yeah, we've got that, we've got this, we've got the other. And he said, look, I've got a cupboard. And he opened the cupboard, and in the cupboard is all this software. I mean, these days it comes through the internet, right? But in those days it was on a disk. So here's all these tools. And are they really using all those tools? Because I could see that some of those boxes still had the cellophane wrapper on them. So, yeah, you may have purchased them, but you've had no time to install them, no one to really look at it. And even when you have installed it, have you really maximized that tool? Whereas if you're doing that, if you're using that tool set on multiple environments, you've got um, maybe a uh, managed services architecture. So maybe that's important when you're looking for a partner is that they have a very, very good architecture for their support environment, that they have the best best in breed tool sets, that everything works together because it's it's not I get you know, it's not one tool that can do everything. You do need multiple tools and it's how you kind of fit all those tools together for collecting information, dealing with incidents, problem management, the, the, the processes of the ITIL. So I guess, you know, it's the architecture that we, we should also be interested in. Yeah, Mark, spot on, spot on. I, I just came back from a, a FSI, uh, one financial institute, some meeting itself. They have five tools, five different tools in the network management. There you go. Okay, <laughs> five tools, all right. And But they, they have having one major issue, main point. The main point is, I do not know where is my network conjection. Five tools they invested, but they do not know where is the network conjection. Yeah. Right. So they, they, they talk to us, we work together and prove it to them. Within the tool, within the tools that we have, the knowledge that we have in the knowledge database, we are able to detect early detection of the congestion of the network environment, detect the, the, the problems that are brewing, and even give them a solution prior to the to the to the uh, the, the problems really occur. So, so I think a lot of these uh, traditional clients environment, they have invested big time, believe in tools. But today, this, the trend that we're going is to share the tools with those, to share the tools with the, the service provider they're providing and be able to leverage the knowledge, leverage the skill and leverage the standard process that we put in place to make sure that they continue to do the business with, uh, uh, based on the network ability, right? So, if we so Sherlock. That, yeah, yeah, they're rich. I think we have to. I think we have to wrap up. I, I think we're past the half hour. But um, okay, I just wanted. To, I just wanted to say something, though, Rich. Is just to bring that to the to the Monday morning headache scenario, right? So, in essence, the Monday morning headache does not start on Monday morning. Yeah, it starts it days, happen. weeks before then, and it's how we organize ourselves to avoid the Monday morning hangovers that's, that's, that we should be addressing, not trying to deal with Monday morning headaches. Let's deal with the root cause rather than the symptom, yeah? Yeah. Absolutely. Great conversation with you guys. We could go on forever. <laughs> okay. So, Amin, nice to see you. Rich, great to see you. Sorry we ran over by a couple of minutes. So, uh, yeah, fantastic. Great conversation. Really interesting. Thank you. Guys, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Cheers.